This is the place that people would gather from different institutions who wanted to collaborate to do particular research. The Marine Biological Laboratory way of doing science is one of being incredibly collaborative, incredibly creative, and incredibly brave. The MBL has brought together this amazing community of cephalopod researchers, people who are asking all sorts of different questions to start to put together a cephalopod model system. We have cephalopod culture experts who are right now providing us with a steady stream of embryos to inject. We have very nice facilities for doing the injections of the DNA editing reagents. And also we have a community of cephalopod biologists who are all pitching in. We're gonna open up new ways to do perfect camouflage, to change genetic information. We're really looking at huge questions. Is there another form of intelligence and complex behavior on planet Earth? I think there's a compelling reason why cephalopod research is so appropriate now. You can take C. elegans, and it's very tiny, and it has X number of cells in the whole brain or body. You can look all the way in the other end of the spectrum to rodents and humans. The cephalopods are right in the middle of that spectrum. They're a beautiful comparative model. People have always been fascinated about working on them, but it's been limited what can be done. But we're hoping to really change that very rapidly. We've got eight to 10 species at any given week that we're culturing through multiple generations, and we're able to support the larger research community with thousands of these animals that we're producing. What we're doing is creating a sustainable breeding program where we're culturing them from egg to adult and then back to egg again. We're the only research lab of its kind that is culturing and breeding this many species to this extent for these purposes. I can now do comparative work in all sorts of different species where before it was just a struggle to raise one species in the lab. They're so unusual that you would find an invertebrate animal that has this very elaborate, complicated brain. Cephalopods and the vertebrate lineage are the only two animal lineages that have achieved this behavioral sophistication. If we understand how, we better understand from two independent systems what it's necessary to achieve this. Octopus genome is about 90% the size of the human genome. By comparing these different genomes, we can see the different kinds of genes that are available to make a brain. We can inject peptides into the squid synapse and see if those peptides affect synaptic function and take that information and apply it to patients who have Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease. In our brains, there are about a little over 100 known places where we make changes in our RNA. Cephalopods, on average, are doing it about 60,000 times. As conditions change, or as you want to change your information in different ways, you can do that. They are an evolutionary oddity, if ever there was one. And they can do certain things, but they do it with a totally different body form. One of the big questions is, are they doing it with a totally different brain form? To really even approach a question of that magnitude, you need folks who really know all ends of the spectrum. Having the collaborative capabilities of Chicago, Argonne, and MBL, along with scientists from other institutions around the world is special. There's subjects that we can do together that we couldn't do alone. You can't calibrate the rate of discovery because there's a lot of serendipity involved. But the more people involved with the freedom of trying different things, that does stimulate discovery.